and we are back with a, another hackathon. So I was just browsing DevPost, which is this online hackathon forum, and saw this particular hackathon. It's the Yelp AI hackathon, which is essentially using the Yelp API to build something unique and creative. A lot of you have been asking for my previous videos, various questions like, where do you find these hackathons? How do I exactly approach them? What video software recording do I use? And so I kind of wanted to just sit down and show you exactly how I build a project, come up with the idea, and submit it. You know, I'm fortunate enough to live in San Francisco, which hosts a lot of in-person hackathons, but because I'm out of the country for a while, I have to resort to using DevPost, which is sort of this online hackathon forum where you can go find projects that are interesting to you and just you know, build and submit a project. Ultimately, how I choose these hackathons is really out of interest. Do I find the problem statement interesting and do I find the sponsor interesting? And it just happens that since I'm traveling, I have been trying a lot of different foods, some good, some bad. I figured, hey, why not make a project that's somewhat in that vein of food restaurant reviews? And I just saw the Yelp one as I was browsing. How do I come up with an idea? Sometimes I'll just literally copy paste the problem statement, put it into ChatGPT and say, hey, I am brainstorming for a hackathon. Can you come up with five unique ideas for a project? You know, oftentimes I just start with the initial ideas that ChatGPT spits out and see if I can be inspired. So constraint first, dining agent, mood to venue translator. I almost like the first one, having some sort of constraint which the agents use to output something because it's pretty well defined in scope and I really only have today and maybe a little bit of the next few days to work on this. One thing that's been bothering me personally is that when I'm out and about, I don't really know which area I'm going to end up in when I'm hungry. And so oftentimes I just do food near me. I kind of have to pick a restaurant on the spot and I don't really know if it's good. I don't really know if it fits my palate. I think it'd be really cool if I were to just input restaurants that I've liked before. The AI kind of takes, you know, known dishes that I like and recommends newer ones in the area that I'm currently in based on what my palette is like. So that's kind of the idea. One, it's pretty doable in a short amount of time. I think it leverages the theme of the hackathon pretty well and fits within the problem statement. So when you have an idea, you want to come up with some sort of base feature that you need to get done and then everything else is kind of an addition. I think what I want to do is ultimately your input, select a few restaurants that you've liked. The LLM gets that as context and then recommends different restaurants in the area that you're currently in. Everything else is a bonus. You have two things. One, you have the front end UI design and then you have the back end functionality. So let's start with the front end. What do I use to prototype these? I often use V0 to just prototype. So let's say one feature is we want to allow the user to just input a restaurant name, show suggestions after typing so that the user can match it and then store that restaurant as context. While that's working, I want to think about the back end calls now. For the back end, we're going to need two main components. I haven't really looked at the Yelp AI API that in-depthly, but what I'm going to imagine is we can just pass in the existing restaurant list as context. So it's just going to get this giant wall of text. Then I'll see what it spits out and I'll just parse the response and then display it nicely. I think another thing is because we're going to have to store the restaurants that you like, I'll probably need some sort of database integration like Superbase. I don't think that'll be too hard because they made it pretty easy to integrate with V0. So I'll, I'll give that a shot. But hopefully Claude code, I think given that I give it a good enough prompt, I'm just going to try to get Claude Code to crank out the backend integration. I imagine I can just use the Next.js uh, backend API routes versus having a full-blown TypeScript or fast API backend, just because it's, you know, take all the context from Superbase, shove it into the AI, Yelp AI API, and then parse the response and display it. I, I think it's essentially a simple CRUD app. Let me read the documentation right now. So we need some sort of search API. Hopefully Yelp provides something like that. Here we go, Yelp AI search and chat. What does this take? So yeah, it seems like we get some natural language query. Let's see what V0 output in here. There's, let's say I'm searching for greens in San Francisco. I'm probably gonna have to build this functionality somehow. No saved restaurants, search and add some find restaurants near me. I'm gonna push it to GitHub, I'm gonna pull it down, and then I'm gonna see what kind of API integrations I'm gonna need because the search restaurant feature, I need to figure out a way to actually search restaurants. Maybe that'll require Google search. I'll have the super base integration. So I think V0 can do that, so I'll try it with that. But if not, I'll just do it manually using cloud code, you know, make a super base project. And then once I do that, I'll update you guys and show you 
you know, the progress. All right, I got some of the tedious stuff set up. So a lot of the API keys were created. The Superbase project was created. Pretty much, I just, you know, ended up figuring out, or I just asked Codex really is, okay, I have a location input. I have a restaurant. Uh, find me an API that gets it. So Lakma, for example, is a popular restaurant I like in San Francisco. So once I searched up Lakma, it queries Yelp and gives you, you know, the list of potential restaurants. But anyways, now I need to figure out how to save this to Superbase, probably just ask Codex. I do a lot of the AI coding because it's just a lot faster. I mean, I can go look it up and copy paste it every time. That is look up the TypeScript documentation, but it's just so much faster to prompt Codex knowing that I can just tell it what I want it to do. That way I can focus my time on actually designing the product, crafting this narrative, because ultimately I want to tell a story that's very relatable and that they, the judges can immediately see what my product does. I think story is really important, something that's relatable and e very easy to understand. A lot of the judging feedback that I've gotten is actually participants actually run over the time limit for the demo. And because you're looking at so many submissions, your story or demo has to be crystal clear because the judges often don't even know what the participants built. At the end of the day, right, if you're looking at so many submissions, you're gonna remember how you felt after a certain project. To be honest, this project is fairly simple at the end of the day, but really I want to make the story so compelling and so relatable that hopefully it the judges are impressed by it. We can see Codex here is just working. I think one thing about Codex is it's very slow because it's been working for 200 seconds as opposed to Claude. I'll work on it a little bit, uh, probably get dinner soon and I'll come back to it and update you on my progress. All right, it is a new day for me. I ended up going to bed. So quickly to give you an update, I'm just trying to hook this up into Superbase. So the way I prompted it was I essentially said, hey, write me a migration file with uh, the tables that I want so that I can just copy and paste it into Superbase here and run it. By the time this video comes out, I will have just put this in a public repo. So if you want to check it out, I'll also put that in the description. Yeah, I'm just trying to prompt away, try to fix the little bugs that are coming up. It's not seeming to connect to my Superbase table. And so I'll just be debugging that. So the way I'm going to debug this is let's just try a test. Okay, maybe it did. Let's see. If it's a, we have a fetch error here, I'm not sure why. I think it might be because there's no restaurant saved. So I think we get this error when there are no initial restaurants. We may need a try catch. I'll let that run in the background while I debug it. So let's see if the Yelp integration works as well. I have a restaurant called Lakma in San Francisco that I really like. So here we see it shows up. Let's see if it saves the super base. Okay, I see that it's saved here. And let's check the actual database table to see if that worked. Awesome, cool. So we see that worked. We see the integration working. And honestly, we can try this button, see if it <laughs> works. I haven't tested this yet. Okay, cool. Un unable to retrieve my location. I'll also queue that up. And I click find restaurants near me. I get this error. It's a really iterative process where I test something out, I prompt it back and this is my hackathon coding workflow it's not necessarily my regular coding workflow because a lot of times you know you're pressed for time and you just need to get it to work even if it's not the best practice so so basic ui here you can search for restaurants add them here and then you can see a map of them so mapped out just for fun but the real kicker is you have your saved restaurants you can find restaurants you know, near me here. So hopefully when you click find restaurants near me, it'll take your list of saved restaurants, extrapolate what you liked about those restaurants and try to find new restaurants near you that you would like. Because it, when you're in a new country, you don't exactly know what the food tastes like. So it's just trying to find that similarity. When I click that, we find restaurants near me. It loads and nothing was found because I think it errors. So right now I'm just trying to fix the bug. We see, I'm sorry, I couldn't find highly rated restaurants near that location. The first thing is I'm going to look at my prompt. So I couldn't really find the prompts in the code. So I just had Claude or Cursor migrate the prompts into its own text file and then I'm just trimming their comments. But I think the problem or issue is that I need to be more vague about the uh, query into the Yelp API because in the example it says things like can you find a Thai restaurant near me so I think I have to prompt it in a way and I'm just gonna write 
that in the, the chat box here, but I need to prompt it in a way where it's vague enough to where the API will actually return results. So maybe something like find restaurants near me that have like this type of cuisine that tastes like this. Accept all the changes because why not? But I wrote a plan to try to change the prompt, trying to generalize it more, making it more about the actual taste of the food rather than the cost or the price because it's purely about matching the palate of the food. You know, in the future, there can be price recommendations, but really I just need the core functionality, nailing that one thing that the project gets right. So I'm just going to try to keep chipping it away until the functionality is working, and then I'll think about making the UX a little bit better. Running into issues here, basically I was able to call the Yelp AI API successfully, but we see that the query string is a bit too long. Yeah, we have to shorten the prompt. I'm not sure what the limit is. Okay, so I have a thousand characters, so we'll see how good of a response I can get from that. But I guess it's just more massaging the prompt. So I just realized that because I'm in Thailand, my coordinates don't actually work for the Yelp AI API, so it's been returning no results, no results for me. So I think I'm just gonna have to spoof a specific one. Hard coding in the location, fixed it. Now it's just a matter of making the actual recommendations and results better, making the presentation and the demo a little bit better, and then I'll record a quick video and just submit it and see what happens. All right, nighttime, I washed up, but now I'm gonna work on the UX a little bit. It's pretty common for LM calls to take a while. Another thing I'm using B0 for is actually loading components. So I just have this dedicated chat here, which I pretty much just Try to start off with, I want to create a loading animation of a globe. I just literally, again, copy pasted the code, pasted it into Codex and told the to great. You know, I only have one day left for this submission, so I might just keep it at what it's at. It's more of a video to explain exactly how I approach these hackathons, especially if you're a one-man show. Okay, doing some final touch-ups. Made this little banner to look more like a 1960s diner. Did it in V0 and then ultimately just copy pasted the code over and put it in my product. So we have the normal flow where you can save your restaurants, you have the saved restaurants, you have a little map view, and then you can find them. So I'm gonna record my demo, submit this, and then I'll update you on how I did. And this is my submission for the Yelp AI API Hackathon. So I built a restaurant finder of sorts. And mainly because I've been traveling, I've been trying new restaurants, and haven't really been able to find restaurants that fit my taste. So I built a tool that where you can search for your favorite restaurant. So let's say I had you know, this restaurant in San Francisco that I really like called Lakma. You can add it to your saved restaurants here. But ultimately what it does is it takes those saved restaurants that you have and extrapolates relevant metadata. So like the cuisine or maybe some of the review information and then goes and passes that in into the Yelp AI API. So they've released the results and my project was not selected. And honestly, it's a numbers game at the end of the day. You just got to keep submitting projects and you can't win them all. But the most important thing is you analyze what you could have done better and apply that to your next few hackathons. And certainly with these online ones, it's evident from the winners that they've dedicated a lot of time to their projects. And if I'm going to earnestly submit a submission, then I need to dedicate a lot more time. But I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope that you were able to learn something from my process and hopefully apply it to your own hackathon. So cheers.